Our next guest is an Emmy-winning actress and comedian you know from her critically acclaimed series Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Her off-Broadway show, Death, Let Me Do My Show, opens at the Orpheum Theater in New York December 7th. She also stars in the Max series, Julia. New episodes premiere Thursdays. Let's take a look. You got any advice for an old girl navigating the West Coast? Well, it usually goes one of two ways. If you're a hit, then you grow. Not just your audience, but you. Your power, and you feel it, and it feels good, and it feels permanent. But that's a trap, because nothing in L.A. is ever permanent. Please welcome back to the show our friend Rachel Bloom, everybody. <laughs> welcome Woo! back. It is so good to see you it's again. It's so good to be here. This is such a, a weird night for you to be here because you actually uh, met Michael Shannon before. You were on the show Lip Sync Battle together. Yep. You took him on head to head. He lip synced an R.E.M. song, which is he's going to sing one later, yep. uh, End of the World as We Know It, and uh, he defeated you. Yes, I lost to him. To, yeah. be, to be fair, I was on lip sync battle with him uh, before my show had premiered. So to the audience watching lip sync battle, it was a famous person and some unknown woman. Yeah. It was like, like it was, they might as well have like picked me off of the street and they were like, oh, good for her. She was working at that restaurant and they found her. <laughs> like they, they truly had n no idea who I was. So look, he was great, but it wasn't a fair fight. I'll okay, that. great. <laughs> you know, today, who knows how the vote will go? But here's the thing. This is not the first time I've come in second to Michael Shannon doing REM on a TV show. Yeah, but if it happens a third time, some weird's going on. Yeah. I was saying earlier, uh, this is a fantastic poster for your it's show. A great, it's a great It is a great, great. This is a show, uh, you planned to do in 2020. Uh, uh, COVID obviously interfered. Uh, you did a run in the fall, and uh, and now you're doing it again. Uh, very personal show. Uh, what sort of set you on the path of doing this? Yeah, so I was planning to do a big comedy, musical comedy special and show in 2020, and I was planning it in 2019. Uh, I gave birth in late March 2020. Um, a bunch of uh, sad things happened around that. Um, I was in my office where I had written all of the bullet points for my planned stand-up musical show with my daughter in the middle of a pandemic. I was uh, grieving my friend who had passed away a week after my daughter was born, and I was looking at these bullet points for this special. And when you look at bullet points of a stand-up set, nothing makes you feel worse about yourself as a comedian. Yeah. Like, the bullet points, basically bullet points, it's, it's a way that you remind yourself. So it's one word where it's like, pencil, booger. One of them was like, old lady pop song, yeah. question mark. Like, I didn't even have, have enough confidence to not put a question mark. And I, <laughs> and old lady pop song was pretty good, though. I, it was the idea, <laughs> it was the idea that all of our pop stars are so young, but why should we rely on young people to tell us about our culture? So I want, like, an old lady pop star. Yeah. Okay, that's a middling response, and yeah. I'm glad that I... But you would have done I'm a song. I'm glad that I moved on. It was that's... a whole song. You have to actually have to get the context. You actually have to hear the lyrics, but yeah. this is really good feedback for me. Yeah. Um, but they don't understand. That's, but you just laid out a premise right there. I think it's a very strong premise. Yeah, but this is uh, my unpaid writer's room, so thank yeah. you. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, no, we're no, back no, no, on... No, no, now we are on strike! One more strike. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was like, I can't do this same show now. The yeah. world has changed. My life has changed. I'm in the middle of what was my office with my newborn child. I'm breastfeeding. My life is somewhat of a shambles. And so that's what inspired this show. I basically tried to do the show I wanted to do in 2020. And then there is an interloper in the form of death. I want to say I am always the most impressed. And I do feel the best work comes out of a creative person who's willing to throw away work. You know, yes. because again, once those note cards are on the wall, and I've been there too, you you can't stop thinking about all the work you've already put into it, and it seems insane to throw it away. Yet, anytime you talk to somebody who tells you, yeah, I knew it wasn't the right stuff, and they threw it away, that's when a great thing comes out of it. So I, I do applaud sucks. that choice. Thank you. And, it, and what sucks is I tried to keep a lot of my old material in the show, and it all just lifted out. It slowly out. goes away, And the right? one thing that's left, I can't say the title on television, but it's, let's just say it's about a certain tree that uh, smells up the entire country. Every okay. year. And people call this tree a thing. All right. It's a tree that smells like semen. Okay. I think I can say semen, right? You semen, can say is, semen. semen is scientific. Yeah. It's the semen tree. Okay, great. But I say that another word. For I it. think everybody here wants to come to this show now. <laughs> I got you. You know, other, 
Uh, you know, you talk about death as a theme, and uh, you talk. There's a story about um, your dog yeah. not passing away, but uh, uh, you received a very interesting letter. Can you explain? The story here? Yes. Yeah, so we got a business manager a couple years ago, and the, it's someone who kind of looks over your finances uh, because I am financially incapable of anything. And uh, and he said, oh, you have a dog. You, I'm going to put you on something called pet health insurance. And then a week later, he said, ah, you know what? I, I found you a cheaper health insurance. I switched you to that. So unbeknownst to us, the way he got us out of the first pet health insurance was he told the company our dog died. Yeah. So one day, I'm walking my dog, and then I come home, and I open up the mail. Uh, to find this. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, so with deepest sympathy. If you open up that card there, Seth. Um, a lot of people did a lot yeah. of work. So this is a condolence card signed by everyone who worked at this, turns out, mom and pop insurance company. Yeah. Um, so I am, I'm looking at this card, and I am now being told that a dog that I've been walking for the past half hour is in fact dead. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it, it messed with my head for a while, and this yeah. is the real card, and I have it laminated in my uh, drawer, and I take it out and look at it a lot. Yeah. Well, the good news is you, uh, you saved 20 bucks a month, so there you <laughs> uh, You were uh, very kind to bring, uh, uh, you, you know, again, uh, I think it's very helpful when people talk about that creative process and looking things on the wall and realizing it's not right, and also early uh, performance. Um, you have some photos of some of your early times in uh, New York, and most of these, uh, I would imagine when you look at them, uh, your memory is of the anxiety, is that safe to say? Oh, no, you know, I actually have really good memories of, of my time performing in New York. Oh, yeah, this is so great. So um, this is a picture of me on my college sketch group. I'm in a sketch with my friend Matt, and I'm on a date. Um, it was so fun. What you don't see here is, at the time, I was in a secret relationship with a man who was ashamed to be with me. And this was... Um, <laughs> This was the latest in a continuing pattern of going for unavailable men who were ashamed of me. And so um, part of the reason I'm so happy in this sketch is because for once I can be openly in love with someone, even if it's just pretend. That's great. <laughs> Good times. Oh, my now, God. Now, what were you going through here? This, is, this brings up such nostalgia, so. <laughs> Obviously, here, I'm dressed as a bear. Um, I was the most unhappy I'd ever been in my life. Uh, so um, I found out later that I have generalized anxiety disorder, but at this time, it had kind of pendulum to general depression. And uh, the secret relationship was over, but that guy was going to be at the sketch show this night. Um, so I was like, I have to look hot. Now, luckily, my depression uh, made me kind of not want to eat, so I was very skinny. So uh, I did look hot, despite the fact I was dressed as a bear. It's mm. <laughs> a good memory there. It's just such good, uh, it's just like nostalgia bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. OK, this is, this is my first time doing stand-up. Uh, don't worry, the secret relationship <laughs> was over. Um, but I will say that um, at this moment, the OCD intrusive thoughts that I had had as a kid reared their head again in adulthood. And so as I was doing this first stand-up set, it felt as if my body was separate from my mind, but I still killed. All right, great. <laughs> That's all that matters. In the end, our desperate need to please strangers yeah, is all yeah, about yeah. it. New York comedy, so fun. Uh, uh, how old's your little one now? She's three and a half. Three and a half. Uh, you said something that very much rang true for me, which is when you have a child, especially that first child, you feel as though you were cosplaying as a parent. Yeah, yeah. The first, I don't know about you, the first year and a half I had a kid, I, I kept thinking, when are these people going to come and pick up their baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, someone needs to take her. And then now I say things. Well, first of all, and you talked about this in your stand-up, just with the voice of, like, wow, those are some big feelings. Well, you know, when she yes. says just the worst things to you, which you never... If someone cuts you off in traffic, you wouldn't pull them over and be like, hey, you have some big feelings yeah. right there. Do you want to talk about them? Do you want to watch Daniel Tiger? And then the way that I sometimes speak to her are ways that I would never speak to... Hey! Do not, do, we don't pull the dog's tail. We do not, we don't pull any dog's tail. Like, I couldn't, I would be sued if I did that yeah. at work. Um, but it just, it feels like you're doing an impression of a parent sometimes. Yeah. Um, finally, uh, we showed a clip of Julia. That's sort of like uh, a period piece uh, yeah. show about Julia Child. Uh, do you enjoy uh, that? I love it. I thought it was so fun. My family's from Boston, and so I filmed it in Boston, and it takes place in the early 60s, so it kind of felt like I was cosplaying as someone who knew my family. Uh, uh, that was a callback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And what I find kind of relieving is when you were in the 60s, you only got, women got their hair done once a week, and then your only job was to maintain. And we think of the 60s as this, oh, restrictive time for women, but how easy is that? We didn't have to look at TikTok mermaid wave tutorials. You got your hair done once a week. And then similarly, there's all this pressure 
to just, oh, you gotta, you gotta work out and have a skinny body, but that's what a girdle was for. <laughs> and that's why spanks are so popular. They're basically girdles. Girdles have come back because women have always wanted, we've always wanted to smooth out our lumps, right? And so it's a lot easier to wear a girdle, to wear shapewear than to wish for a different body type. So I found it actually very empowering to wear the shapewear and have my hair done. I felt like I could focus on other things because someone else was doing it for me. There you go. What a, what a, that's a ringing endorsement. I've... A ringing endorsement of the time. Yeah. Um, it is always such a delight to have you back here. Thank you so much. Congratulations Thank you. on your show. <laughs> you guys, that's Rachel Bloom, everybody. Death, let me do my show. Opens at the Orpheum Theater on December 7th. A new episode of Julia premiere Thursdays on Max. We'll be right back with music from Michael Shannon and Jason Narducci.